Welcome everyone to Bedtime Stories with Duck and Goose. Now with Duck Cam. Forgot to say, I'm Duck. I'm Duck. I'm Goose. That's Duck. We're here to read some bedtime stories. We're live right here. Every Sunday. Um, at 7.30 Central Time. Sometimes we do special streams. Um, we did one on Christmas Eve and one on New Year's Eve. And uh, welcome. Let's... Thanks for following along. Um, <laughs> and let's get started. There was a black hole that swallowed the universe. Look, it's the universe. Dedicated to Sagittarius A, my favorite black hole. <laughs> there was a black hole that swallowed the universe. I don't know why it swallowed the universe. Oh well, it couldn't get worse. There was a black hole that swallowed a galaxy. It le left quite a cavity after swallowing that galaxy. Oh no. It swallowed the galaxies that filled the universe. I don't know why it swallowed the universe. Oh well, it couldn't get worse. <laughs> hello, hello. There was a black hole that swallowed a star. It couldn't get far, that bright shining star. Oh no. <laughs> It swallowed the stars that lit up the galaxies. It swallowed the galaxies that filled the universe. I don't know why it swallowed the universe. Oh well, it couldn't get worse. There was a black hole that swallowed a planet. Very organic, this fine looking planet. It swallowed the planets that orbited the stars. It swallowed the stars that lit up the galaxies. It swallowed the galaxies that filled the universe. I don't know why it swallowed the universe. Oh well, it couldn't get worse. There was a black hole that swallowed a cell. That seems like a pretty big jump from a planet to a cell, but... We'll keep going. <laughs> okay. There was a black hole that swallowed a cell. It might be unwell after swallowing a cell. It swallowed the, the cells that gave life to the planet. It swallowed the planets that orbited the stars. It swallowed the stars that, that lit up the galaxies. It swallowed the galaxies that filled the universe. I don't know why it swallowed the universe. Oh well, it couldn't get worse. There was a black hole that swallowed a molecule. It thought it was fuel, a big molecule. <laughs> it swallowed the molecules that fed the cells it swallowed the cells that gave life to the planet. It swallowed the planets that orbited the stars. It swallowed the stars that lit up the galaxies. It swallowed the galaxies that filled the universe. I don't know why it swallowed the universe. Oh well, it couldn't get worse. There was a black hole that swallowed an atom. It's hard to get at them, those tiny atoms. <laughs> it swallowed the atoms that built up the molecules. It 
swallowed the molecules that fed the cells. It swallowed the cells that gave life to the planet. It swallowed the planets that orbited the stars. It swallowed the stars that lit up the galaxies. It swallowed the galaxies that filled the universe. I don't know why it swallowed the universe. Oh well, it couldn't get worse. There was a black hole that swallowed a neutron. Do you think it was Jimmy Neutron? A good start to build on a neutron, neutral neutron. <laughs> it swallowed the neutrons that stabled the atoms. It swallowed the atoms that built up the molecules. It swallowed the molecules that fed the cells. It swallowed the cells that gave life to the planet. It swallowed the planets that orbited the stars. It swallowed the stars that lit up the galaxies. It swallowed the galaxies that filled the universe. I don't know why it swallowed the universe. Oh well, it couldn't get worse. There was a black hole <laughs> that swallowed a quirk. That's all there was. And now it's dark. black hole facts the end all right abc arts book from steam baby i believe that that stands for science technology engineering arts and mathematics pretty sure A is for actor. An actor is an artist who tells stories through make-believe. Actors use costumes and imagination when pretending to be characters in plays, TV shows, or movies. B is for ballet. Ballet is a graceful dance that tells a story. Ballet dancers practice for many years. They dance wearing special clothes like leotards, ballet slippers, and tutus. C is for composer. A composer is a person who thinks up new music. Some composers write musical notes on paper, and others create music on an instrument. And others do both. <laughs> D is for director. A director is in charge of almost every part of making a movie, TV show, or play. A dir the director guides the actors, writers, and crew so that everything runs smoothly. Hey, I'm glad you guys like the setup. Duck's loving it because I gave my huge treat toys. <laughs> oh, he'll be here the whole time. E is for easel. An easel is a stand artists use to hold up paints and drawings. An easel can be used while the artist is making the artwork or to display it once they're done. <laughs> F is for frame. A frame wraps around the outer part of a picture. The frame protects the artwork and makes it look complete. G is for gallery. A gallery is a place where artists show or sell their work. Visitors can see paintings, photographs, sculptures, and other creations in an art gallery. H is for harp. A harp is a large musical instrument made of strings and wood. A harpist plays the harp by plucking and strumming the strings to make a light, magical sound. I is for illustrator. An illustrator makes pictures to go along with stories for books, magazines, websites, or other places, like movies. Illustrators can paint and draw on paper or with a computer. 
<laughs> J is for jazz. Jazz is a type of music. It began in African-American communities in New Orleans, Louisiana. Jazz, mu jazz musicians are known for imp improvising. Oi. There we go. That means they make up music as they're playing it. That is way harder than it sounds, let me tell you. K is for kiln. A kiln is a very hot oven that heats and hardens clay into ceramic pottery. A potter creates clay pieces and carefully loads and then fires them in a kiln. But not with the door open like this picture. That wouldn't work very well. L is for landscape. A landscape is a picture of an outside place. Artists capture the shapes and colors of trees, rivers, or other parts of nature in landscape art. M is for mobile. A mobile or mobile is a sculpture or three-dimensional artwork that moves in the air. An artist can make mobiles that hang from above or that balance on a base. Uh, often, you will see mobiles in babies' cribs to keep them entertained and to help them go to sleep. N is for notes. <laughs> notes are like the letters of music. Just as letters come together to form words, notes combine to create songs. Each note has a different sound and can last a, a long time or be very fast. O is for opera. An opera is a special kind of play that mixes drama and music. The performers are called opera singers. Instead of speaking, they sing the whole story to music that's played by an orchestra. P is for portrait. A portrait is a picture of a person that shows how they make, shows how they look or even feel. Artists can make head-to-toe portraits, or ones of just someone's face. Q is for quilt. A quilt is a colorful blanket made with small pieces of fabric sewn into a pattern. Artists often make quilts from patches of old clothing. Like a t-shirt quilt. R is for rhyme. A rhyme is a group of words that have a similar ending sound, like cat, sat, and hat. Rhyming words are fun to sing in a song, or say in a poem. <laughs> S is for studio. A studio is a place where artists work on what they're making. Musicians, writers, and other artists can be found working on their craft in studios. T is for tap shoes. Tap shoes are special dancing shoes that have small metal plates called tap on the bottom. Tap dancers wear these shoes to make exciting rhythmic sounds when they perform. U is for unique. Unique is a word that means different and one of a kind. An artist, an artist develops a unique style by creating art from their own memory, ideas, and imagination. V is for violin, or viola. A violin is a small musical instrument made of wood and four strings. A violinist plays the violin by sliding a bow across the strings. W is for watercolor. Watercolor is a type of paint. When mixed with water, the watercolor dissolves into colors that can be spread across paper. Ma then you can make paintings of. <laughs> X is for X Factor. The X Factor is a special, shining star quality that people see in talented artists. An artist with an X Factor may make surprising artworks that people like to talk about. 
Y is for yellow. Yellow is a warm color, like the sun. It is also a primary color, along with red and blue. Mixing primary colors together makes secondary colors. For example, yellow mixed with blue makes green. Z is for zoom lens. A zoom lens is the part of the camera that can make things far away seem really close. This is called zooming in. Or a zoom lens can make things that seem make things close seem far away. This is called zooming out. The end. My Allosaurus has lost his roar. My Allosaurus has lost his roar. He's been like this all week. He stamps, he stomps, he chews, and he chomps. Rawr. And then roars with a teeny tiny squeak. My Allosaurus has lost his roar. It's getting worse and worse. We went to see the doctor, but he hid behind the nurse. Oh, help, a dinosaur. My Allosaurus has lost his roar. He's feeling sad and blue. Without his roar, this dinosaur is grumpy through and through. But it never used to be this way. He used to roar all night and all day. Rawr, 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 rawr. He'd roar at stones. Rawr. He'd roar at sticks. Rawr. He'd roar when he did magic tricks. Abracadaroar. It was the thing he did the best. He never seemed to take a rest. Rawr, rawr, rawr. But then, one day, there was a change. He sounded odd. He sounded strange. His, his roar was soft. His roar was weak. And then, his roar became a squeak. Squeak. I think I know what's wrong with you. You roar too much. That's what you do. So, if you want to roar for longer, we'll need to make your voice much stronger. But luckily, I know a trick to fix a roar and fix it quick. So, walk this way. It won't take long. We'll sing the special roaring song. Fa la la, fa la lu. Roaring's fun for me and you. Squeak. Tra la la, tra la li. Can you roar along with me? Squeak. Don't give up. Try and try. Get your roar back. Don't be shy. Grrr. One last time. You can do it. Roar once more. There's nothing to it. Roar! My Allosaurus has found his roar! Roar, roar, roar! His troubles have all- <laughs> His troubles have been banished. But the only problem now is my Brontosaurus has vanished! Oh no! The end! Who ever heard of a flying bird? Living on an island in the middle of the sea, Pip and all the other birds relaxed beneath their tree. Her flock stayed on the ground. They never thought to fly. It sounded so ridiculous, they didn't even try. They lived down there in the dirt, eating seeds from off the ground or fruit that fell off the tree all squishy, old, and browned. Island life was simple, and she lived in a life of ease. Yet, 
Pip still learned for something, yearned for something more than life beneath the trees. You like the you like the dinosaur one? <laughs> yeah, I like. Uh, we read a different one from that same author. It's really good. <clears throat> Pip, be Pip became determined to find a way up high. She had no clue of what to do, but she knew she had to try. Pip started with the basics, something never tried before. And aiming for a piece of fruit, she jumped up off the floor. Sadly, this was not enough. She missed it by a mile. The others chirped and laughed at her and taunted with a smile. Who ever heard of jumping birds that leap and bound around? There's no such thing as jumping birds who won't stay on the ground. Pip was not a quitter, and she had another plan. She took off running in a dash, and up the tree she ran. Although she sprinted quickly, her tactic did not work. The others seemed amused by this, and looked on with a smirk. Who ever heard of running birds running up a tree? There's no such thing as running birds, the others squawked with glee. Pip was not quite finished. There was still more things to try. Next, she tried to flap her, ring her wings to reach the branch up high. She flapped and flapped and shook her wings and spun and danced around. But nothing changed, and there she stood, feet firmly on the ground. Who ever heard of flapping birds flapping up and down? There's no such thing as flapping birds. You're silly, like a clown. That's not very nice. Pip had even more ideas. She tried to do them all. But everything, every single thing she tried just ended in a fall. Ouch. That night, she took a walk and found a place to sit. She thought, that feels impossible. Maybe I should quit. While sitting there alone, a firefly flew by, and Pip was just amazed to see that a bug could fly so high. A feeling then came over her. She had to try once more. She knew it did not matter that no bird had flown before. She barely slept a wink that night. She rose before the dawn. Then waddled slowly to the tree as the other birds looked on. Pip began to flap her wings and then took off with a dash. She made it pretty far this time, but landed with a crash. Who ever heard of flying birds like clouds up in the sky? Don't you know there's no such thing? We just weren't meant to fly. She thought of all her failures, and she thought of all she'd learn. She looked at all the bumps, lumps and bumps, and bruises that she'd earned. She stood back and dusted off. A tear was in her eye. She clenched her beak, and Pip resolved to give it one more try. She focused on the fruit above. She breathed in long and deep. She spread her feathered wings and ran then took off a giant in a giant leap. One said, That's impossible! We weren't meant for flight! But Pip did fly. She reached the fruit and took a juicy bite. One by one, Pip took each bird and showed them how to fly. No longer stuck down on the ground. Now their home was the sky. The end. The Pajama Zoo Parade, the funniest bedtime ABC book. Let's see. <laughs> oh man. It's time for bed. Hip hip hooray. Let's all give a cheer. The day is through. We've had such fun. Now sleepy time draws near. 
so we'll tidy up our toys and wash our faces clean, brush our teeth, and comb our hair. Prepare to rest and dream. But one important task remains before we say goodnight. Put on your favorite jammies and snuggle in real tight. Before you drift away to dream, let's check in at the zoo. I hear they're having a parade and a PJ party, too. <laughs> Oops. There we go. Albert Aloysius will be the lead, uh, will be leading the parade in neon pink pajamas and a cap of gold brocade. He is a proud alpaca as he marches down the way while the others follow while, while all the others follow behind at the end of every day. Beatrice Baboon is a beauty, all agree, as she marches through the zoo in her favorite lace nighty. She smiles at her mama as she marches off to bed, blowing kisses on her way to rest her pretty head. Cleopatra, Clyde, and Cooper, still damp from their bath, follow in their striped pajamas on their scooters down the path. Papa Cheetah doesn't like it, for he fears they'll catch a chill. But Cleo, Clyde, and Cooper really don't believe that they will. <laughs> Desmonda Dingo dances on her toes in a ballerina nighty covered all in bows. Gliding oh so gracefully, she twirls and leaps along. As she waltzes off to dreamland, she, she hums her favorite song. Edward Austin Elephant is cute as he can be. In his polka dot pajamas, he is quite a sight to see. He can barely stay awake to, end the, <laughs> to the end of the parade. So, he rides in his red wagon, pulled along by his cousin Wade. <laughs> Fatima Papadopoulos is next to come along. She holds hands with her big brother while they sing a song. Papa Papadopoulos is proud as he can be. He is sure his ferret babies will be starring on TV. <laughs> Gabri uh, Gabrielle Gorilla in her jammies all in gold will not listen to her mama and rarely does what she is told. Instead of marching with the others, she swings from tree to tree. That's why Gabrielle Gorilla is a cheeky monkey. Okay, this is a funny book. <laughs> Hugo Hippopotamus with his brother Hans together play upon their banjos as they march in any weather. In their matching blue pajamas, they strum and stroll on by. These banjo playing brothers are very happy guys. Ivan the Iguana doesn't like to go to bed. He won't put on his nightshirt. He just stands and shakes his head. After trying to convince him that it's that it is only right, Ivan's mama gave up trying. He sleeps naked every night. <laughs> Here comes JJ Jackal in his pajamas all of blue, carrying a banner as he marches through the zoo. He blows his mama kisses as he makes his way to bed. Little JJ Jackal is a happy sleepy head. Kimberly Koala is a snug is a snuggle bug. It's true. When it when it gets close to bedtime at her home right here in the zoo, she is oh so very sleepy. And though she might Oh, and tr whoops. And try though she might in her PJs, eyes are closing, off she drifts. Good night. 
Luna Llama, Leo Leopard, and Linus Lion Cub sail through the parade on a float, made just for their club. Their favorite part of bedtime is playing in the bath, so they wear their sailor jammies, rowing slowly down the path. Mia Moose has red pajamas. They button up the back. She has a matching bathrobe and a bathrobe and a plaid nightcap. They are made of flannel, so they keep her very warm, even in bad weather, like a winter snowstorm. Tiny Nina Napu sleeps the whole day through. Her daytime is our nighttime. So she's unsure what to do. Does she take off her pajamas and get dressed to spend the night awake, alone, and happy until morning light? Oliver the octopus waves flags with all eight limbs. As he saunters down the sidewalk, everybody looks at him. His snazzy jazzy jammies are red and blue and plaid. Oliver the octopus is very seldom sad. Polly Panda sleeps in jammies yellow as the sun. When the parade is over and another day is done, Polly's papa tucks her in with her blankie all in green. Then mama kisses her goodnight and, send and wishes her sweet dreams. <laughs> Quinton Quail and his friend Pete are next in the procession. The two of them, they have a plan to teach the cat a lesson. They take their nightcaps off their heads and up the tree they fly and drop them down upon the cat as he goes prowling by. Oh no. Rabbit Robert Robinson wants to come along to take part in the parade tonight, but something has gone wrong. In his hurrying, it seems there's something he's forgotten. In racing to get ready, he's forgotten his pajama bottoms. Uh-oh. Whoops. Look out for Sammy Seal and his brothers and his sisters. They balance balls atop their noses and never muss their whiskers. Sam can even juggle seven balls upon his head in his pajamas with his siblings. Sammy leads them off to bed. <laughs> Terrence Tortoise and his cousin, Tony Turtle, have the need to ride atop a fire engine due to lack of speed. Their pajamas look like fire suits and they were custom made by their Aunt Petunia, especially for the bedtime zoo parade. <laughs> Upton J. Fitzgerald is a baby Uriel sheep, following the others on his way to go to sleep. He prances off to dreamland. He is always ready in his favorite pajamas and his soft, fluffy teddy. Vera, Vince, and Victor are proud as they can be of their velvet green pajamas. They were quite a sight to see. Mama Vulture snaps their picture as the three as the three go marching by. Now the sun has set and the moon is up. Oh my, the day did fly. Wally Rollwis paddles past and his nightshirt drags along. As he makes his way toward the end, he hums a sleepy song. Little Wally's awfully sleepy, getting closer to his bed. He cannot wait to lie right down and rest his weary head. Alexander Xantus is a, is a type of yak. It's true. He wears his fur pajamas as he marches through the zoo. When you see Alexander, you know it won't be long before he plays his little drum. Boom, 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 bong. <laughs> now, Yolanda Green, the Yorkshire pup, is chosen well for sleep. 
a flannel tartan nighty, and slippers lined in fleece. Her sisters and her brothers have saved a little space, so Yolanda Yorkshire Puppy will have a resting space. Her place. Duck's still sleeping too. Who is this coming down the path? The last one in line. It, uh, why, it's sleepy Sally Zebra. She is truly divine. In her shiny glitter PJs with purple butterflies, she twirls and tosses a baton away up into the sky. Now you have seen the zoo parade. We've gone from A to Z, from Albert the alpaca to a zebra named Sally. And now that all the other animals have marched along to bed, it's your turn to do the same. So lie down and rest your head. Close your eyes and drift away to dreamland for a while. And in the morning, you will wake, stretch, and yawn, and smile. Then we will have more stories, games, adventures, er, and adventures, you and me. Like our friends, the animals, in the zoo pajama party. The end. There was a black hole that swallowed the universe. This is from the same author as the ABCs for mathematics. Dedicated to Sagittarius A. My favorite black hole. <clears throat> there was a black hole that swallowed the universe. I don't know why it swallowed the universe. Oh well, I guess it couldn't get worse. There was a black hole that swallowed a galaxy. It left quite a cavity after swallowing that galaxy. Oh no! It swallowed the galaxies that filled up the universe. I don't know why it swallowed the universe. Oh well, it couldn't get worse. There was a black hole that swallowed a star. It couldn't get far, that bright shining star. <laughs> it swallowed the stars that lit up the galaxies. It swallowed the galaxies that filled the universe. I don't know why it swallowed the universe. Oh well, it couldn't get worse. There was a black hole that swallowed a planet. Very organic, this fine looking planet. It swallowed the planets that orbited the stars. It swallowed the stars that lit up the galaxies. It swallowed the galaxies that filled the universe. I don't know why it swallowed the universe. Oh well, it couldn't get worse. There was a black hole that swallowed a cell. It might get on well after swallowing a cell. <laughs> it swallowed the cells that gave life to the planet. It swallowed the planets that orbited the stars. It swallowed the stars that lit up the galaxies. It swallowed the galaxies that filled the universe. I don't know why it swallowed the universe. Oh well, it couldn't get worse. There was a black hole that swallowed a molecule. It thought it was fuel. A big molecule. <laughs> oh no. It swallowed the molecules that fed the cells. It swallowed the cells that gave life to the planets. It swallowed the planets that orbited the stars. It swallowed the stars that lit up the galaxies. It swallowed the galaxies that filled the universe. I don't know why it swallowed the universe. Oh well, it couldn't get worse. There was a black hole that swallowed an atom. 
It's hard to get at them, those tiny atoms. <laughs> They're so tiny. It swallowed the atoms that built up the molecules. It swallowed the molecules that fed the cells. It swallowed the cells that gave life to the planets. It swallowed the planets that orbited the stars. It swallowed the stars that lit up the galaxies. It swallowed the galaxies that filled the universe. I don't know why it swallowed the universe. Oh well, it couldn't get worse. There was a black hole that swallowed a neutron. A good start to build on a neutral neutron. It swallowed the neutrons that stabled the atoms. It swallowed the atoms that built up the molecules. It swallowed the molecules that fed the cells. It swallowed the cells that gave life to the planet. It swallowed the planets that orbited the stars. It swallowed the stars that lit up the galaxies. It swallowed the galaxies that filled the universe. I don't know why it swallowed the universe. Oh well, it couldn't get worse. There was a black hole that swallowed a quark. That's all there was. And now it's dark. <laughs> the end. Stellar black hole facts. <laughs> the center of the black hole is called the singularity. We will probably never know what happens at that point. When two black holes collide, they send out waves of energy that stretch and squish space itself. A black hole is black because it actually pulls light in with its immense gravity. The end. Alright, I don't know if you guys could see. These are his rocket ship jammies got spaceships um oops. So there's some stars on there mostly spaceships there's ufo on there somewhere stars and spaceships thank you to everyone for coming to bedtime stories with duck and goose uh if you are watching this on youtube hello if you're watching this on twitch bod hello if you are watching this right now, good night. <laughs> we will see everyone next week. Again, we do this Sundays, Sunday nights, 7.30 Central Time. There he is. <laughs> Me and my little co-host. Thank you all for coming and good night. <laughs>